morning everyone. So the Paul Fish typology timeline uh, part 3 again is uh, focusing on the trumpets, the piece of the trumpet, the piece of the atonement and the tabernacle. tabernacles. So we have here the blueprint of the temple. So we are going to talk about it what to the but, priest. But Simon your voice is very faint. We exactly. we hardly can hear it. Please yeah. speak louder or come nearer to the mic. So, so we have the the blueprint of the temple here. So we are gonna tackle about it. That what 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 did the priest doing on the blueprint of the temple and also the holy of holies. On the thumbnail, so the piece of the trumpet uh, parallel to the 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 outer court and the piece of the atonement to, to the holy place, then the tabernacle to the most holy place. Okay, Bar Francis, uh, what can you say about this? So what's, what is the reason why we parallel this? The three fold uh, feasts, we parallel to the blueprint of the tabernacle. No, it's on the death of Christ. Okay, Francis, so... Uh... Uh, we are in the fall today. Right now, Israel is being attacked by Gaza, uh, Hamas. And it's a 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War. Yom Kippur is the Feast of Atonement. That's the Feast of Atonement. Uh, the Feast of the Trumpets is Yom Teruah. Now, is it by, by accident that Israel is be, today being attacked? It's not. It God is signaling many things. Of course, there are many Israel watchers waiting for the rapture, looking at this uh, prophecy of attack. But it go, goes deeper than that. So we're not going to spend our time talking about the political and military engagement taking place right now, just right now at the news. We're talking about God's hidden message thousands of years ago given through Moses in, in this fall feast, in this fall season, autumn fall. We are here in autumn fall and there are many significance. Uh, what we put in that the we b before in Revelation chapter fourteen we talked about the parallel of the temple blueprint with the events in the timeline, the church ages. Now we're gonna talk about the parallel in the feasts because the feasts also is parallel to the church ages. So the feast of weeks is the church ages. The seven days and living bread, that's the seven church ages. The feast of the trumpets, it's the church ages parallel to the tribulation period. At the end of the tribulation period, that's atonement. But the tribulation itself is like an atonement for these 2,000 years of church ages. Too bad uh, you didn't prepare for the picture, but I'm talking too fast. But... Uh, I hope you can share. Uh, others prepare. Don't share screen until you ready that picture. Then you can share screen. Uh, the church ages uh, illustration. So, so that our viewers can understand what we're talking about. Okay. So the the temple blueprint is also parallel to the church ages, and also here in the fall feasts. Of course, it's not just fall feasts. You see the altar of sacrifice, the golden laver. Those are parallel. That should be way back here in the cross, okay? The church ages. So, uh, the holy place, that should be longer, okay? The holy place should be from, from the... the um, from the period of the trumpets. So... You should have pushed the the altar of sacrifice smaller at the level of the cross here. So the the compartment of the holy place should be longer. The most holy place is correctly a square box, but the holy place should be a rectangular box. 
Okay? Of course, you cannot adjust it now. I'm just letting our viewers know. Uh, because that's the church ages. That's the trumpets. What is the trumpets? God's long suffering of warnings. So what does trumpet represent? Of course, I'm going to leave you to ask about that. I'm just, just giving a little a bit ahead. The trumpet, what is the are the significance? What are the meaning of a trumpet? So later we're going to talk about what's the meaning of atonement and the meaning of tabernacle. If the, These are the fall feasts. God has a message within Okay, so uh, proceed with your questions. So I'm not going to get ahead with this. My voice are limited. I have some. So, so you mean the the holy place or uh, the uh, also uh, parallel to the trumpets atonement. So. So, OK, OK, so. What is uh, what is the uh, the meaning of the the trumpet uh, in terms of the the connected to the to the tabernacle? So, piece of the trumpets is uh, a warning. Okay. So actually, when you are in uh, uh, the in in Israel, they they uh, make a noise uh, using the shofar. And giving giving the announcement of of the the feast, okay. So, what is the the meaning or what is the the uh, application of that in terms of uh, uh, included the, uh, the the tabernacle? The the oh, what what can you say about that, Bar Prices? So what is For the, the, the use of, of a literal trumpet? If you have pictures, um, the trumpet represents, you said warning. Actually, it has many uses. <clears throat> References, may I add with Brother Menon's question? Uh, excuse me, I had a severe cough the trumpet <clears throat> represent the trumpet is uh, like our modern day siren uh, announcement assembling the trumpet represents uh, here in the Philippines we use bell not just in the Philippines it was used in Europe Catholic Europe, they use the church bell to announce something. Many things. The, the, um, they use the church bell to sound there's an Indian attack. They use the church bell to sound uh, a, an important announcement. They must gather in the plaza. Um, they use the church bell to signal a, a calamity, a storm, an earthquake. So, in modern day, in World War One or Two, they use an air raid siren. There's also a fire drill siren. Even ambulances have these sirens, uh, which blares out. Let us pass through because someone is dying. We need to bring them to the hospital. It it signals an emergency. Remember, in judge counseling ministry, we have an emergency in the family. So and, that gives you an idea. So trumpet represents an emergency, something very, very important that you must not ignore. The pictures you're seeing right now are the trumpet judgments in Revelation chapter 8. And it's called the trumpets because what's happening on earth is still one third it's a warning for the whole world it's a warning because the completion of that is the bowls of judgment revelation 16 and it will not just be one third there will be it's no longer an announcement it's already the outpouring of the vials 
it could be equated to the atonement. So while it is still one third, you see a while ago it is still one third. If it is still one third of the earth turned to blood, water turned to blood, or ships in the sea, trees one third burned up, it's a warning. It's an announcement. And what people must do, it's also an instruction for judge counseling ministry in our church. There's an instruction for the families. Actually, we have not warned the families enough. We should be warning each other. But rarely do we do that. Maybe some of us, one, two, or three, but not all of us. So our brethren think it's an uncertain sound. For the world, the trumpets, can you show the church ages? The trumpets in the church ages, if it's applied to the church ages, it's an uncertain sound. Only in the tribulation period will the trumpets be a certain sound. When you say certain sound, they don't care about the warning, the message. The warning message from the church ages, we, it, it's... It is a certain sound for the bride, but an uncertain sound for the rest of the unbelieving world. Why? Because the calamities that happened in the church ages are spread out for almost 2,000 years. So a deist will say, everything just continues just the same. There's no, there's no for almost 2,000 years, there are scoffers. Where's the promise of his coming? Okay. Because spread out for 2,000 years. But so the call for the bride. But here in the last seven years, church ages parallel to the seven-year tribulation period, in the last seven years, it will not be an uncertain sound for the people of the world. Because the calamity is one-third. There will be no rain for three years. Water will be turned to blood. Drinking water will disappear. Everyone will feel the crunch. And all they, of course, they will all blame two prophets. That's the trumpet. Now, what does the Feast of the Trumpet represent? That is, what it, uh, that is one of the major representations of the Feast of the Trumpet. Remember, if God gave the feast, and we, have not, we cannot do anything but be affected by the season of the world, farmers, uh, harvesters, and even uh, business owners, everyone, are affected, even wa warmongers. They're all affected by the season. They follow the season. Hitler follows the season when they will go to the offensive again. So we are affected by the season. We are called by God to take into attention what is so important between the spring season and fall season? And if you take notice of God's creation in the in season, fall season, spring season, fall season, then you take into account what are the feasts that God gave and what are the meaning of the feasts that God gave starting from the trump. Right now we're focusing on a fall feast, the feast of the trumpets. So it's an announcement. It's an announcement. Now, we don't just focus on the church ages. We don't just focus on the warning in the world, the two prophet ministry, 144,000. Too bad you didn't prepare for the illustration of Brother Gan there. Um, we also take note of our family. Well, does that concern me? We will not be affected. We are going to go up to the rapture. Some other churches would think that way. No, it affects you because as... This trumpet also is a warning, is an assembly, is an announcement, is an instruction. So does in our family. It applies in our churches, in our individuals. If it affects the whole world, it affects you as a believer, as a bride, as the true church. If you consider yourself the true church, part of the true church, then you must know the message for your for your family, for the brethren, for your spouse, for yourself. 
There's a trumpet message. There's an instruction. There's a warning. There's an emergency. Okay, proceed with your other question. References. Are you? Uh, is it right to say or think that while the trumpet message is, uh, while the trumpet was blowing or sounding, did the feast of atonement taking place also? I am talking about in tribulation period. How can we apply this in our the church ages as well as the type? the typology within uh, and what part of the three room house this piece of the trumpet and piece of atonement uh piece of atonement if it is uh, uh occurring at the same time is this uh, I, what i uh, what i'm trying to say is uh, the occurrence of trumpet uh, is the occurrence of Feast of the atonement at the same time. Can you? Uh, did you hear me? Hello, hello. Sorry, sorry. Bermina, please show the taber uh, the, the temple blueprint or oh, not blueprint the uh, the circle. Uh, can you blow up the circle? No? Okay, never mind. So, there's a circle. I said, uh, you make another picture for that. That's a good picture. Anyway, let's use this blueprint instead. The outer court, that's the first square. That should not be a square. The middle should be a rectangle. The outer court should, should be a bigger square, but uh, that's why I asked for the third circle. <laughs> the... In the third circle, you have the picture of the tabernacle. Could you go down to the third circle? Maybe, maybe you can blow that up. Could you go down? You zoom down. down. Because this is not a perfect picture. You, you, you must not remove that. You, you were already there. The third circle of the thumbnail. You, you went away. <laughs> okay, there's, there's a better picture there. A while ago, a while ago. Oh, no. That's the same. <laughs> I, I saw a picture in one of your pictures there. A picture of the tabernacle. Uh, never mind. A cutaway picture of the temple. Never mind. So the outer courtyard represents the uh, the body. The Actually, that's the inner courtyard. <laughs> The inner courtyard is the body. The outer courtyard are reserved for the outsiders. The inner courtyard is the body. And it's a square. It's a square. So it's, it, it covers the whole. The whole of the tabernacle. Then you enter into the most holy place. Sorry, the holy place. That is the soul. The soul. Then you enter the whole, uh, Holy of Holies or the most holy place. That's the spirit. Now, in the Feast of the Tabernacles, we focus on our soul. We focus on our body, our soul, and our spirit. So when Jesus Christ was born, this presence of God was outdwelling in his body. Upon his baptism, it indwelt him in the spirit and uh, in the resurrection of Christ the body will be transformed but in the birth of Christ the resurrection will be in the Passover on the, the spring feast but during the fall feast the, the body is focused only at the birth of the baby so our training for the baby is oh that's a good picture okay so that's the type of the temple, type of the tabernacle, the feast of the tabernacle. So you see the baby there. Uh, as I and sick, unto us a child is born. So there's a message in the feast of the tabernacle. He hidden for uh, in the feast given by God for our message. What is our message? We have training for our babies. Today, 
not just our church, but alongside with many other churches, without this message of training, you will play with your baby. You will even corrupt your baby. As the baby grows up into a child, the child knows nothing but play. That's why I shared a picture of, uh, it's a good thing Sister Shirley is taking videos, right? So that uh, we can guide them. I shared them at a hukum class. You can see their young toddler being given toys to play. But uh, I asked a question there. And we should all. The reason, we are uncertain sound because majority of us, 99% of us, do not uh, even remind each other. They don't even, we don't even talk about it, okay? It's not just Sister Shirley's fault. It's the fault of many of us because we are silent. Like we are very silent in our hukum classroom. So there's a message even for the baby, but we ignore it. Just because we look at the cute baby, we look at the flesh. You're looking only on the outward flesh. Just as Israelites were looking at the out, outward flesh. Because we look at the outward flesh and we think there's no problem, everything's all right, motherhood, etc. So even if it comes from fornication, everything, there's no more training. It's thank you, TY. It's uh, taken for granted. So we just forget, we just forget ourselves, be carried away by flesh. No, there's a message of God in the Feast of Tabernacles, starting from the baby. Starting from the baby, Jesus Christ, he was born on the fall of the year. We have proof of that. He, as he was born on the fall of the year, he was killed in the spring of the year. There's a message of God for that. Okay, question. So, Hello, you mean brother. that? I okay, have a okay. question. Okay, by Joseph Paul uh, first. Okay, by Joseph Paul, what's your question? Okay po. Brother, but, uh, what is typology of tabernacle to hukum message right now? Uh, that's what, just what I just mentioned a while ago. If, uh, there are lots of things. Uh, we're, later, we're going to go through that. But I just mentioned about the baby. It's already part of our judge counseling ministry, hukum ministry, training in the family. Even when we have children, we have child, we have baby, there's a message of God. Christ was that message, and Christ was that example. What, what happened to Christ when he was born? He was born on the fall of the year, in the Feast of the Tabernacle. Christ is the tabernacle of God. And as a baby, he didn't have any comforts in life. Because although Joseph and Mary would want to give him comfort, but they were for their hand was forced by, by circumstances that God had created so that his son will be born on a manger. You see that manger there? Don't think that it's a good uh, it's a comfortable place. It's itchy. <laughs> it's very itchy there. There are many bugs. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Did you know what swaddling clothes are? Those are dirty linen. They're used to uh, for the animals. It, what is the message of God there? The child was born without comfort. And what's the message for our family? We should not be so engrossed with giving comfort to our to our babies. Without knowing it, we're treating them like princesses. We're looking only at the flesh. We don't look at the spirit. As the child grows, the child feels he is entitled. That's why the child always cries, not because of emergency, but because she is unhappy. You did not please me enough, like in a kingdom a spoiled child okay proceed with your next question so uh we're going the topic of trumpet so how can we able to connect it the trumpets warning instruction the holy of holies to the holy of holies 
because you said earlier that that priest eating the bread and uh candling the candlestick Le uh Barmenan, please uh share the picture of what the uh, uh others are asking so that people may understand the question so please look for that picture although if someone else can look for the picture so that we, we could be spared with the searches <laughs> so i hope someone will interact that's the picture i, I was asking for the tabernacle but a while ago you said earlier okay. that the trumpets it's is it's a message so how can we able to connect it on the holy of holies when you say Holy of Holies, we are already in the final compartment. How do we connect the trumpet in the first compartment? The first compartment is the holy place. The church ages. How do you connect that? That is the trumpet blares out an important message, an emergency message. And in the first compartment, in the holy place, that represents the menorah the seven-armed candlestick that gives light to the room. And it also represents the table of shoe bread. The table of shoe bread represents the manna, represents the food, that represents the word of God. And the trumpet blares out the message of warning coming from the word of God, coming from the Bible. So, uh... I hope you have a cutaway of inside the temple, a the the holy place where the ministering priests are lighting the menorah. Or so, um, that is how you connect the trumpet judgments. Now, okay, that's a good illustration, but yeah, that's uh, the right the right direction because uh, in our map. Uh, west is right side and e west is in the left side and east in is on the right side. So you see there the holy place. The holy place, you see the golden censer, you see the menorah. You see, the table of shubred is not there. Okay. So the, the, the feast of the trumpets blares out mostly here in the holy place parallel to the holy place parallel to. maybe you can go back to the thumbnail bar Menon, because that's the question of bar simon uh how do you connect the trumpets in the how do you connect the trumpets here in the holy place you connect it because of the message so let me review again uh, altar of sacrifice that represents the cross, the golden laver that represents the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the table of shoe bread, the, the holy place, and represents the church ages. The trumpets are parallel to the church ages and the tribulation. And as you enter into the trumpet, uh, Revelation chapter 8, you're entering into the tribulation. So there are parallel applications of that. Uh, could you show the Brother Gans church ages and tribulation periods for, for our views to understand what am I talking about? What are you talking about tribulation period or church ages? So we have some illustrations. Please show illustrations. If you have parallel between the church ages and temple, but long time ago. Uh, but but uh, church ages will suffice. You have illustration of the church. That that's it. Thank you. So that's the church ages, and if you can go right, uh, that's the tri tribulation. The trumpets are parallel. There are trumpets here in the church ages. An uncertain sound. Go to the tribulation. Please go to the tribulation. Move right. Could you move to the tribulation? I thought it's connected. Oh no. So you next time you must prepare a set. I, I already told Bar JP David. There must be a folder where that is a set where you just you can easily find the next one. 
it's not so spread out where in can okay that's a good illustration it's connected so you can see the right side that's the tribulation period you can see although blurry you know the crumpets judgments that's the ministry of the two prophets that's in the tribulation period so uh that's how you so if you look at the temple format the church ages represent the compartment two representations it represents the holy place now if you look at the tribulation period you look you can also look uh, look at it as the holy place when you reach atonement uh, that's the world war three when you reach the rule, rule of christ that's the most holy place so these are parallels from the temple to the uh, uh, events in the last week of Daniel and the the feast of the trumpets starts there then the feast of atonement then the feast of the tabernacles feast of tabernacles is after world war 3 after atonement okay um continue with your other questions uh if you can command your family to ask questions like oh, ask questions. Question, yes yes question Ian David, um, question Ian David. Um, Berminan, please direct traffic or Simon. Uh, whoever will wish to, you just direct traffic. Who will ask first? Okay. Ask first. I I I have a question, Brother. Okay. My my question my question is uh your topic today is the full full feast what type of yes. part three. So my question yes. is when did this start and end of it? You look at Leviticus chapter 23 on the seventh month. So imagine one whole year is 12 months, right? So if if uh, spring is the first of the months of the year, spiritual calendar, religious calendar, not the civil calendar. So you count from spring six months. That's half of the year. Half of the year, that's the whole summer. On the seventh month, that's the other year. You've crossed over the half of the year. That's fall. So the seventh month of the year of the religious calendar. That's the beginning of the fall season and the fall feasts. You read Leviticus 23. It states there on the seventh month. So on the seventh month, the, the, the feast of the, the trumpets will begin. That's the beginning. It's the beginning. So you just go to Leviticus chapter 23. Okay, anyone else? Let's continue on. Oh, next, Ian David. Wait, Father, I have uh, uh, one only question. What is okay. the end? The end of all feast. Well, the last of of the feast is the major. The major feast is the tabernacles. So we have three. If you can see in the illustration, there's trumpets, there's the atonement, and there is the tabernacles. So tabernacles is the last of these all feasts. Major. Of course, there are minor ones like. The last great day like that that we are not talking about the extra feasts like Hanukkah or Purim we're talking of the feasts given by the Lord okay so let's continue on brother uh, the full feast uh, is over or not yet not yet not yet uh we're still on the eve. Uh, we are still in the, what they call God's creation of the world. The Jews, what Jews call Rosh Hashanah, the, God's, the beginning of the months of the civil calendar, Tishri, and uh, the creation of Adam and Eve for the Jews. But for us, the birth of Christ. Today is the birthday, so birthday of Christ. 
and the baptism of Christ. So there are there is a message there. From the trumpets to the atonement to the tabernacles, there are message there. Even for our judge counseling ministry, there's a message there. There's a hidden message there. We should know it. We should hunger for it. If we are the true child of God, we should trumpet it also among our brethren because we've been lacking in doing that. So the last of the feasts is tabernacles. Hopefully we can go into detail about each of these feasts like atonement. Everything has something to do with judge counselors because atonement is intercession, mediatorship. Tabernacle is anointing from God from being from a baby to baptism from baptism to ministry it's all the anointing of god how you would let be how you would allow yourself to be a vessel of god Our okay can I oh, next question yes yes uh, how many new year in israel new year feast in israel can you speak louder because your sound is very faint uh, Brother Francis, how many, how many New Year feasts in Israel? So there are two. Remember last Sunday, uh, last week, uh, we talked about the blood moon. The blood moon only appears in spring and fall. But so fall was, origi fall was originally the new year of the civil calendar. It's not just the new year for Israel then. Remember, Israel yeah. came up just, were just a people. They were not yet, yet a nation. So, a but civil... Many, in, okay, okay. But many said that, uh, no, that there are four new years in Israel. So, how can it be just too long? Including Ismesh, Ismita. So, if there are four, I know there are four seasons, not four new years. <laughs> Maybe you're referring to Hanukkah or Purim or whatever. But I have I have not read that part yet. Maybe you can share it to me offline, okay? But right now, the two new years is the fall of the year, which is Rosh Hashanah. Though it's very a uh, holiest uh, new year in Israel today. But uh, God had added another new year. The spring. So you can read that in Exodus chapter 12. So you open your Bibles, may, not just maybe one of you, but all of you. Exodus 12, look for yourselves the word, this will be the beginning of months to you. So it's a religious new year. So the civil calendar con still continues to be a new year. But God has a message for that through the feasts. But God started his feasts in the spring. So God used the spring as his new year. So there are now two new years. What is the message behind that? Okay. Now, if you say there are four, uh, just share, teach, teach me off, offline. Okay. So we, our time here is very limited. Uh, we cannot take much time out here to share it. Okay, uh, continue on. There are lots of topics that is related to this subject. Uh, please uh, okay, continue uh, on with your other question. Sister Jocelyn, what? have a question, okay? Yes, yes. Okay, sister. That's the right thing to do Brother, for your family. What? Brother yes. Francis, what is the exact meaning of aton atonement in 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 our in our household in our time what is the message exact message that the atonement must be happening in every household uh, uh, in our days today all three all three the trumpet must happen atonement must happen tabernacles must happen and we're not talking of physical ritualistic feast among the jews we're talking about the message What's the message of the trumpet? It's a warning. It's an assembling. It's a instruction. Uh, what we do, like Kortrata, we're arranging with other brethren what to do. Okay, that's the real ministry. That's complete ministry. Now, let's talk about atonement. Atonement is intercession. 
Remember the high priest entering the most holy place? They have a picture of that, Berman. When the high priest entered the most holy place, uh, he's entering, the high priest is entering uh, to mediate between Israel and God. So atonement, one of the judge counseling ministries at, in the house is mediatorship. First, your household needs a mediator, a judge counselor. A judge counselor is also a mediator. The high priest enters the most holy place. He burns in incense in the altar. The altar represents the prayers of the saints. The smoke that rises up represents the rapture of the saints, aside from the prayers of the saints. And the priest, as the priest enters into the most holy place and sprinkles blood on the altar, it's done on the Day of Atonement. That is like when we do communion, yeah, the time of Moses, it represents bloods being spread in the doorposts. So, atonement represents a lot of things. Atonement, oh, thank you for that picture. Atonement represents sacrifice, redemption. We say atone, uh, cover up your sins, payment for your sins. You are paid up. If you read the uh, Ephesians 1.14, it says, uh, which is the earnest of our inheritance, waiting to it for the redemption of our body. So there's a down payment and there's a redemption. Redemption, you get the purchase possession. The purchase possession, the full redemption, that is atonement. So here in our families, we need intervention. We need mediatorship. We need judge. We need a high priest. So we're not just talking about Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the father, the mother, the children. Look, that's the cutaway I was asking for Brahmin and a while ago. I saw that in one of my pictures. So that cutaway... So the priest entered the most holy place once a year. That's the Feast of Atonement being done. Of course, they didn't have the temple yet today. They couldn't do that physically. But that's the commandment of, Mo of Mo God for Moses. In the Feast of the Atonement, the priest will enter there once a year. But in Leviticus 23, you're going to read that we must afflict our souls. We must repent of our sins. It's a day of mourning of your sins. Uh, what we call pray, yep, a pray with Christ, uh, our, our tearful cries to the Lord. It's our confessional to the Lord. So it's in the family. It's very much in the family, in the church, in our spouses. I would, I would say, Barpadun, uh, what you're doing to your family is what every true believer should be doing to their family. So you have a lot of work to do cut yes, out for yes. you in our church. Because many of our families couldn't care less because they're still being drunken in the traditional ministry. They, we need to train them, teach them, disciple them how they could bring their whole family. Imagine you as a husband, you as a wife, you as a son and daughter. You could, uh, you're commanded to ask questions. This is part of atonement. If you don't do this, there's no atonement. Why? You're doing nothing. You're just attending and playing good music. <laughs> You're just blinding yourself. Brother, but atonement, I... you grow. You make your family grow in the word. Not just you yourself. So atonement is very important in the I family. Okay. To that. Yes, yes, proceed. Brother, next question. Brother, Okay. Yes. About the atonements, we all know that the, ato the Day of Atonements or Yom Kippur is the for paying the penalty of sin or voting reconciliation. So how can we apply this on the Holy of Holies or the on the blueprint of the temple? So we must act like priests. Ministering priests, then the high priest. What are the ministering priests doing? Like deacons, deaconing. Helping out. You look there. <laughs> There's a ladder. They're trying to arrange 
fire on the altar, etc. Yeah, that, at that picture. And there's the high priest that offers the major sacrifice. What is your role as a minister in Christ? You help out. You help out in the ministry, judge counseling ministry. What is your role as a high priest? Of course, Jesus Christ is our high priest, but he's our pattern. What should we be doing in the family, ourselves in the church? We should be mediating for others. We should be judges. We should be bringing the, the word to others. We, we will be instructing the trumpeters to sound an announcement. We will be slaying the sheep and the goat. We will be bringing the blood of the lamb in the altar. So what is the lamb? Our sacrifice. We are also lambs of God. Jesus Christ served as a high priest and the lamb sacrifice. So we should sacrifice our lives and we should also serve to minister to others, to mediate for others. How do you mediate for others? You intervene. You visit their houses. You teach them the ways of the Lord. You read in the millennium, the ways of the Lord will be taught to the heavens. But right now, we should be, judgment begins at the house of God. We should be like the priests, the ministering priests, the high priest, mediating, not just Where praying, can huh? I interrupt? teaching others what to do. Okay. Accepting their sacrifice. So on the, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are going to talk about atonement, right? So uh, I would like to ask a question. On the time of Old Testament, on the priest, they, uh, they have... The, the, yeah, the cleansing process. So, on the time of the Old Testament, they did not, they, they are not fully cleansed, yeah. the high priest. So, that's enter, why, yeah, when they enter. So, that's that, why, when they enter, when they, the enter Holy Holies, they have bell on their feet. Uh, the, the priests have the, the bell on their, the, yeah. their feet, so that... Garments, uh, in the garments. They might die. Garment. If they might die, they could pull it, and they, they would see that the high priest is dead. Okay, so, why the, why the high priest... Uh, die, died uh, because they they are the one who prepared the atonement, the 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 sacrifice. Because you said, uh, brother, if on your audio, uh, yesterday yesterday that they are not fully cleansed, so that's why they might die. So there, God gave some strict rules for the high priest as you go from. Ordinary citizens of Israel to the ministering priest uh, to the Levites, there's a standard of living you should uphold to standards of morality, etc. Then you move on to the ministering priest, there's a higher standard. Uh, there must be no blemishes among ministering priests. Within the among the ministering priests, there's the family of Aaron, where the family of high priests should only come. But among the family of Aaron, or the family of the high priest, there must only be one person chosen as a high priest. That high priest should not be, have any blemish. Blemish does not only include physical blemishes, uh, defects. It includes their lifestyle, their speech, their way of life. Then this high priest would have the highest standard given by God. There is a cleansing process. There's the golden lever and there's a ritual God gave. Come to think of it. Come to think of it that they, why they might die if they are fully cleansed. Not yet. Wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. Sometimes human errors, human mistakes, um, if you fail to meet up to the ritualistic standards of God, I'm talking of the literal cleansing process of the high priest before the Day of Atonement. If ever he comes short of it, like oh, many of us, this is a reminder for us. Many of our parents are so relaxed. Oh, I have to, uh, to focus on the studies or on work of my children, but never mind the spiritual training of the baby or the child or the daughter, even she, if she fornicated, okay? The, our parents are so relaxed, but it's also our fault because we don't share to them, all of us, 
we come short of that standard. Now, if the high priest comes short of the standard that God gave, even if he's sincere, he will be killed in the most holy place. That's why in the hem garment of the priest, there is a bells attached to it, small bells. That are, and while the high priest is moving, okay, it's okay. sounding... Brother, let me finish. Brother, let me finish. Can while I the have high priest is question? moving... Let me finish. While the high priest is moving, the bells could be heard. But if the bells fell silent, that means to say the high priest died inside the most holy place. So there's also a rope tied to his ankle. When the bells are no longer sounding, they pull the priest out from the most holy place. Now, why do they pull? Because they, they could not enter into the most holy place and retrieve the body. Because they themselves will be killed because they, the rest will be also unworthy. You see? So, it goes to show God. That God's hidden message is God gave us a standard. And God will forgive us if we strive. We strive to be perfect even as He is perfect. Huh? But many of us do not stri even strive. Many of us are relaxed. So God sees our hearts. Then God knows. Uh, we know. We should know that we've come short of the, the standard as God that killed the priest that is uh, uh, in, incomplete in his perfection. If we are lukewarm, God will chastise us in our families. God will chastise us. So the death of the high priest is one form of chastisement. So that's the type in the judge counseling ministry. Yeah, yeah. So in the day of atonement, we should be dead serious. Look at what was instructed by God in the feast day in Leviticus 23. Afflict your souls. Mourn for your sins. Are we doing that right now? Or we are so happy that our young toddler is playing lato okay, lato. Can I, in can okay. I interrupt? Okay. Okay. You said I have a question. Wait, wait, wait. Me first. Okay. Can I interrupt your permission to speak? Okay. Yes, yes. On the, we are going to tackle on the atonements, right? You said earlier that um, they are sincere enough. So if they are sincere enough, why would they might die? Because they are the ones who are making the sacrifice, candling the candlestick, eating the table, eating the bread on the table of shoe bread, and you know, they have the altar of incense. So if they are serious enough, and if they are not serious enough, before they go on the bail of the Holy of Holies, they would have already died. Come to think about it, you know. Robert Simon, when I said that God in our time can forgive us of our shortcomings, if, we, if our hearts are pure, our hearts are striving, but if you are imperfect because you deliberately, you deliberately are lukewarm, are relaxed. You you prioritize more the other things than spiritual things, right? Uh, what are other things? School, work, even house chores, okay? But uh, with regards to spiritual things, you you cut short. You you cut out you. God is not requiring too much, but you even you even uh, uh, reduce the sacrifice towards God. That's like in Malachi, you gave the blemished uh, lamb. You don't give the perfect lamb. So the high priest that died because he he committed some omissions, errors, is representative of our hearts today. Our hearts today, yes, we are not perfect in our flesh, but we can be perfect in our hearts. We can be striving our best. But we are not striving our best. I'm asking others to respond in a class, but they chose to keep silent. That means to say they were so engrossed with the world that when they go to God's uh, fellowship, 
they could not even want to spare a little voice to answer. They shortchanged God, but God gave them the blessings they need, all their needs. But they don't want to return unto God a little, even a little portion of that. So that shows insincerity of the heart. So God sacrificed those high priests that made a few mistakes in their death in the whole, most holy place to, to type us that we sometimes are imperfect, not because like the high priest we come short. We are imperfect because we deliberately did so. We sinned willfully. How do you mean willfully? You willfully did not ex uh, uh, ex uh, did not uh, uh, exert enough effort as you exerted effort for work, for food, for paying the bills, for for laundry, <laughs> for school, even playing the babies. You exerted less effort for God than you exerted. It's a modern-day idolatry. It's a modern-day idolatry. And Christ died for that. Uh, brother, As the high priest who died, Christ also died in the, uh, for aton our atonement. For, for the sins of many, but not for his own sins. Okay, very enough. Okay, uh, those uh, priests that have died uh, in the pro because they were blemished in the sight of God, so God killed them. So I uh, will be connecting it to the ministry that we are carrying right now. So uh, the Hoko ministry, so we teach, uh, or we also listen to our instructor, uh, and we are under the process of training as so is that also a type of uh, uh, of the typology of the of how the priest before uh, how they represent uh, themselves as unblemished before God? Yes, yes, yes. It's a good type because the priest will be very careful because he know he is gonna die if he gonna is gonna commit a mistake. Remember, the priest is sincere. The problem with us, we are not sincere. How do you know we are not sincere? Because you exert less effort for training of your children. You would rather see them play worldly things than... Uh, and you spend only minutes in trying to train them for the Lord. Or you make your own version of training them then for the Lord. Instead of uh, uh, repeat reading, uh, repeat whispering. Uh, you just gave them a little memory verse, then uh, play for the rest of the day. So, uh, if you teach them repeat reading, you don't teach them to forward their own finger. Even they're not looking at the booklet, just so that the instruction will be finished. Just repeat what I'm saying. <laughs> so, you're not doing it. You're not striving to be perfect. God sees our hearts. God wants our hearts to be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Be ye holy Remember? as God is holy. So strive. The, the message here is strive. In our hearts, we are lukewarm. We have not striven because we've exerted more efforts in, uh, Sister Bernard has exerted more effort in more on work than on the spiritual things. Okay, what should, how we should strive? We should strive to move from idolatry to the true God. What is idolatry this time around? Psychological idolatry. We give more effort and exert more effort on other things than God. So we have to move. Uh, put God first. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So that is the type. Now, atonement is the intervention for that. Atonement is the ministry for that. As God, as Christ had this ministry of reconciliation, we must have a ministry of reconciliation with God this judge counseling ministry within our families, within our churches. That is the ministry of the fivefold ministry. That's a complete ministry of fivefold ministry. How do you train your families? What is the right way of living? What is, uh, how will they learn, grow in the word of God? Can I, can I interrupt? Can I interrupt again? Permission I'd like to, to speak speak other Mr. examples. Uh, I'd like to say other examples. 
there was a European Space Agency rocket. Okay, okay, okay. They spent tens of billions of dollars for that rocket, and that they committed a mistake. They failed to to change metric uh, English system to metric system, and just because of that error, the rocket crashed into Mars. <laughs> So it did not survive. They lost billions of dollars just for that. So they they did not purposely they did not purposely make that mistake. It was an honest mistake. Even honest mistakes will cost you. It could cost you your life, cost you billions of dollars. Even in school, even if you're sincere, but you committed a mistake, you you fail the class, you fail the exam. For LRT, for other kinds of aircraft, flying an aircraft, a pilot, there are many things that cost lives, cost a lot, uh, uh, major consequences. If you did not focus, you did not take careful aim, your careful focus on what should you will be doing. That is the message. That's the message here in atonement when the priest would die if he overlooked something. Overlook a little bit. God will kill that priest. Okay. Uh, Bar Simon, continue uh, brother, your question. Bar so have... okay. Simon, I think, has a question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing that you, you've you already known. Okay, okay. So, uh, I'm going to... Uh, you come come nearer so the okay. voice it will be much clearer. Could you come closer? Okay, okay. I'm going to ask a question about uh, the high priest again. You said yesterday on your audio, shh, on your audio with Papa, you said earlier that the high priest is the, is the typology of Jesus Christ. So if the high priest didn't fully cleanse, what did Christ didn't fully cleanse also? Because you said that the, the high priest is the typology of Christ. Because... Christ is the high priest of the seven church ages. Uh, you misunderstood me, Bar Simon. I didn't say all the time. The but high you said priest yesterday died. that Christ did die because all of the sins. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not yet talking about Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the high priest that died. You because said that of... yesterday. I, I, uh, I just listened to your audio. Okay. Okay. Let me clear up something, even if I did not mention this in the yesterday's audio. The high priest will die if he uh, overlooks something. But most of the time, the high priest did not die. Maybe just because I talked about this, you thought all the high priests that went into the Day of Atonement died. Not all, only a few, because they are so careful. They are the type of Jesus Christ. Tell this to Brother Arki. Ah. Even ordinary high priests, Aaronic high priests are a type of Christ. Because they are so careful. They know their lives are at stake. The Spirit of God will kill them if they commit a simple mistake, an honest mistake. So majority of the high priests do not die. Like the, our airplanes, majority of our airplanes do not crash. <laughs> Otherwise, there would be airpl no airplane industry. So just a very few minority, a very few percentage of the pilots commit some error and the plane crashes. Just a few minority of the high priests die in the process of what I'm saying in the tabernacle when he offers up the blood sacrifice once a year and he's incomplete he will die it that happens very few times majority of the time the high priest fulfill his duties completely and take full focus full uh full effort to focus on the details so that he might not miss anything now let's go to jesus christ Jesus Christ is a, a perfect example of a, uh, he is perfect. He has no blemish. So uh, aside from genetically, there's no blemish. He has no blemish. 
spiritually, in his actions, in his words, in his mouth, found where found no guile. So Jesus Christ, example, are the priests that did not die. He, of course, that's dual. It's dual. The priest that did not die is an example of Jesus Christ having no blemish. The priest that died is an example of Jesus Christ taking on the sins of the world so that he himself would die. So they, they, these are two parallels. The reason these two things exist, they, they both foreshadow Jesus Christ. So the death of Jesus Christ is also an example of the Feast of Atonement wherein he is the atonement for sins. He himself is the sacrificial lamb. As the sin, as the high priest died because of his of his some of his errors, Jesus Christ died for our errors, for us, for us, who we also who we, who we also will bring up to be high pri priests like him. That's Revelation five. That's a royal priesthood in First Peter chapter two verse nine. That's Melchizedek priesthood. Of Jesus Christ will also apply to his bride believers. So uh, that's the answer, Brother Simon. Okay, follow up, Brother Enoch. I hope someone will direct traffic from your side. Okay. Okay. So my question was on a, about the the bell. Uh, when we uh, see the and read in the Bible that the priest was uh, wearing a bell. When they are entering the temple, so so the bell will would ring if the uh, if the priest uh, is dead. So what is the typology of this bell? Is there any representation, or is there any typology in our current day today? The bell represents our. Uh, manifestations as priests of God we should not keep silent remember in the room I was asking everyone to respond but not everyone would respond only a few would run to respond what's happening in their hearts when they're not responding as though something else is much more important than God so the bells represent our message our testimony in our lives we should let others know we should not keep silent we should let them know the warning of god otherwise you don't love them or you ignore the message of god we should have bells so that to let others know we're alive in god we're mediating for them that we're not dead spiritually so the bells in our tassels, uh, sorry, the that in our hem, the hem of our garment, the heart garment of the priests, actually the high priest himself, represent the sound of the voice, the the voice of the sound, or that trumpet sound has a voice, has a message. It should not be an uncertain sound. We say uncertain. Is it still? ringing <laughs> is the bell still ringing or no longer <laughs> I, i'm not sure <laughs> which should be a certain sound certain sound yes it's ringing clearly if it's ringing clearly then you are active your your life shows you you're an epistle you're the epistle that men can read is in your life and what is that life you're witnessing you're asserting fam you're asserting authority in your family you're training your family you're teaching other brethren you're, you're giving them workshops you're reckoning them so that is the bells in the if you look at a high priest they look at the hem of his garment there are tiny bells there so that is what is represented there you have to actively move to make it sound if you move slowly, then it becomes an uncertain sound. So that is what is represented by that bell. And we are in the in the Feast of the Atonement. That's the high priest mediating for the sins of many. Okay, so in the, in, in the altar, 
it coincides with the golden censer. You had a picture of the golden censer a while ago. If we parallel the church blueprint with the the church blueprint with the atone, atonement, it coincides with the golden censer just before reaching the most holy place. The most holy place this time around is represented in the Feast of the Tabernacle. You have three feasts, right? Trumpet, Atonement, Tabernacle. Tabernacle is not just the whole tabernacle in the, from the outer court. Tabernacle this time around represents the inner sanctum, the inner co innermost court, which is the most holy place. So that's also being represented by the Feast of the Tabernacle. Okay, here in the illustration, you can see the golden censer, the four horns, the golden censer, the golden altar. That's atonement. That parallels atonement. The priest will end, uh, put incense there, then enter the most holy place, then sprinkle the blood on the altar. That's on the day of atonement. As he enters the most holy place, he is in the center of the tabernacle. The Feast of the Tabernacle does not only represent the outward, outward tabernacle. It also represents the inner tabernacle, which is the presence of God. So the presence of God in our lives, the presence of God in our families, in our church, that's also a type of the Feast of the Tabernacle. I hope each and every one of us, our families in our church, local church, could understand this and appreciate this and apply it in their lives. How do they apply it in their lives? We apply it in our lives by apply, I, applying the, the, what God expects of us in our families, in our churches, with regards to the word, so that the presence of God will be in us. While we have praise, worship, singing, what should we be doing? We must not leave our children alone or young people who are uh, who are still lukewarm it, it, because we, that's a fellowship we teach them, we minister to them as, as priests so how do we have the presence of God in our midst so that's the feast of the tabernacle so, but we, so must, atonement is what we are doing like example uh, in our church we must have some assistance uh, deaconing uh, for others to be able to uh, train their families or the young people or even brethren what to do it's not just only from the pulpit but down there in the grassroots level there must be deacons doing that bishops overseeing that so that's atonement when when you finally accomplish that then you can enter the into the presence of the lord okay so that so much for that continue with your other questions Oh, we have 30 minutes to go. So, um, continue with your other questions. I hope you have a list of them. So let me remind the family that commands their children and their spouses to ask questions. Just a family offered up to God. Uh, just asking questions is like sacrificing to God because we should sacrifice ourselves to know what is the perfect, acceptable will of God through His Word, through His revelations. Okay, so any more, any other more follow up questions, Brother Joshua, Ruth? You must involve Ruth. Um, Brother Jerry, children. Where Jerry's not here. Okay. So, uh, any any more follow-up questions? Okay, Bear Francis. Hello? Yes, yes, proceed. Okay, so, uh, again, again. Uh, Could you come closer? The, let's, come let's closer, your voice is very... The, the piece of the tabernacle. Actually, your voice is very, said, very, on, very low. Uh, if they go to the Kogusere in Kawakasan, uh, you, you apply it into the Hukum ministry. 
So, what is the highlights of the Peace of the Tabernacle? According to the audio, uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, who, uh, we, we cannot uh, ponder the, the, the greatness of God. We cannot uh, see God uh, because He is dwelling in the light. So what is the connection of this uh, verse to the when the priests go to the the holy of holies and uh, uh, he, he sprinkled the blood and then after that he he, he is not uh, he will not die and complete the process of uh, sacrifice. So before I answer that, I request someone to read for me for me, First Timothy chapter six. Maybe start from verse 15 or 14. Please read for us. Okay, so the verse here says in verse 15, uh, which in his time he shall shew who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, verse 16. Who only had immortality, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach, unto whom no man had seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Now, when I was reading those verses when I was young, I could only think of the Godhead like God is the only one who can dwell in the light where no one can approach unto. And sometimes I would think of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one who can dwell in the light where no one can approach unto. Those are uh, previous revelations, traditional revelations uh, of the Godhead or Melchizedek or whatever the priesthood of Jesus Christ. But now, we're talking about priests that die in the presence of God, if he is incomplete. So, understand this. If no one could stand before me and live, it was mentioned to Moses also, no one could stand in my presence and live. So, God uses Theophanies. Okay? If no one can stand in my presence and live, many people died by not being qualified to touch the Ark of the Covenant, not being qualified to enter the most holy place in the Day of Atonement. The Feast of Tabernacles represent, are we qualified to receive God's Spirit? I mentioned long time ago, if we're not qualified to receive God's Spirit, God would annihilate us. That's the lake of fire. So, whether you like it or not, Ecclesiastes 12, our spirit will return back to God. The issue is, will our soul be annihilated or will our soul survive being reconnected with God? Really go really return to God. So, um, being reconciled back to God, if you are not worthy, you did not uh, have a sincere heart to be acceptable unto him to be justified then when you are being returned to God you will be annihilated and that will take place in the lake of fire so everyone everyone whether they like it or not whether they believe in God or not they will be one day be reconnected back to God Oh, my throat is very itchy. This is for the moment. I have to drink. So, I was as I was saying, um, being reconnected back to God. This is the type. This is the type of. The first Timothy chapter six, 
dwelling in the light where no man can approach to. If you are not <coughs> justified when you come to God, you will be destroyed. Now, we talked about in our previous broadcasts, the whole world. Can you show that illustration? It, the tabernacle is like the, the period of the earth is entering into the most holy place. As it enters the tribulation period, there will be tribulations, calamities on this earth. There will... Can you show illustrations? There will be calamities on this earth. God is cleansing this earth of the wickedness of man and all its works so that we will pass through a period of cataclysm in this earth. It's So when you read First Timothy 6, it's not just Jesus Christ. It's not just the bride, the whole world will enter into the most holy place. That's the Feast of Tabernacles. The whole world will experience the presence of God. Now, if you're not found worthy, you will be cleansed, you will be destroyed, you will be burnt with fire as there is a burning in the altar. It represents the pour outpouring the bowls of judgment in Revelation chapter 16. It was prepared in Revelation chapter 8. When the seven trumpets gave her, seven angels were given seven trumpets for them to sound, there was an announcement in the golden censer. The prayers that they were being prepared, the wrath of God's being prepared to be poured out into the world. The whole world will enter into the most holy place as the high priest entered the most holy place. And if they're found not found, whosoever is not found worthy, those who without the seal of God, they will be annihilated. So, that's the representation. You read in Revelation chapter 14, the art of the testament was seen in heaven. Revelation 15. 14 and 15. Uh, 15 particularly, Revelation 15. The art of the testimony was seen in heaven. What does that mean when you read that verse? It means the high priest is in the day of atonement is entering the most holy place and the whole world is entering into him with, him with it. So, as we have examples in our family, for ourselves, Jesus Christ, we have examples for the world. So as you read First Timothy chapter 6, uh, dwelling in the light wherein no man can approach unto. You could not approach because if you approach, you die. But God is the one approaching. God is the one coming down. God, through his prophets, in his final prophets, is coming down. One third of the trees are being burnt up and many more are coming down. The war in Israel is one signal for that. Okay, let's follow up with other more questions. We have less than 30 minutes to go. So, uh, I have a, another question. For, uh... I hope you shown the tribulation share screen while I was talking about a while ago. Please share screen, share screen anything. <laughs> someone has to help out while someone is asking question. Okay. Okay, Please so... Uh, so, uh, about the Feast of the Tabernacle, we... So, uh, in, so we typed this uh, Feast of the tab Tabernacle about the... Our, about our body, about the about the body change. So, how do we obtain the body change through through the Hukum ministry? So, this judge counseling ministry, Hukum ministry, is our uh, trial period. It's our test towards God. To show our sincerity, to show our worthiness. So, if we can be found worthy in the sight of God, then He will glorify our body. He will change our body. If we are dead, He will resurrect us. If we are still temporarily, physically alive, He will body change us. 
So, the Feast of Tabernacles, the end of that is our body change. So, Christ, after baptism, became obedient unto death. So, during his birth, his life was given over for the ministry. He's in preparation, training for the ministry. He is baptized. So during fall season, Christ was born. During fall season, in his 30th birthday, he was baptized. Then baptism represents the beginning of his ministry. Ah. <coughs> okay. So... The, the beginning of his ministry up to his death. That is also the Feast of the Tabernacles. So tabernacle means while being born, he had the presence of God around him. Luke 2.40, Luke 2.52, you have a picture of that. I must be about with my father's business. What is he doing? Sharing, discussing the word of God with the scholars in the temple. <laughs> then after 30 years old he gave his life for the ministry until his death that's the feast of the tabernacle that's when you say judge counseling ministry hukum ministry you have that ministry in your life from childhood to baptism to beginning of your ministry from your baptism being born again, being filled by the Spirit, God's Spirit, to your death. That's also the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, my throat is very itchy. I cannot continue. Uh, please continue for the moment. Okay, Mary Francis. Um... <laughs> So the 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 and uh, the uh, application of the feast of the tabernacle uh, to our life is when God dwelling in us. Some other churches, some anti message believer believe that they are they call themselves God, they call themselves Son of Man. So. In, in 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 nowadays can we call ourselves god can we can we call ourselves jesus christ because uh the the final fulfillment of the the tabernacle is when god tabernacling to jesus christ uh he also tabernacling in us and uh god will tabernacling in the world so uh, when you read on uh, Revelation chapter 21, or I think when the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from earth, going to, to uh, from from heaven going to the earth. So it is the 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 God was tabernacling in the world. So what is your comment about the some other end time believe we are God? already we are christ already we are it's already rapture it's already millennium don't don't don't, don't, don't get ahead don't get ahead of yourself if you get ahead of yourself it's like sarah trying to Self-righteously, sariling discarte. Self-righteously fulfill God's plan. Like every parent, using an alternate uh, instruction to do it by their own way. So do not get ahead of yourself. Of course, they're teaching it out of ignorance. They need to hear our... We need to place them in the right place the right time right now none of us can claim to be a perfect high priest we're an example of the imperfect high priest 
but we should strive to intervene. Part of the atonement is that sacrifice for others. So, uh, we can use the small letter G, gods. We cannot yet use the whole capital letter G, God, yet. Christ has that right. Brother Gan said, in the, resurrect, in, his, in the resurrection, then he can be called God. It gave me, it uh, confirmed my deep-seated revelation that the body of Christ is also the tabernacle of God. The body of Christ becomes God or becomes glorified on his resurrection, upon him overcoming. The feast of tabernacle includes the body of Christ being glorified and him sitting in that uh, sitting in the right hand of God. He is representative of God, the theophany, permanent theophany of God. That is the tabernacle. And we are not yet in that state. We will reach that state. If we have the right revelation, we will be like Jesus Christ. But how perfect are you here right, while you are here on earth? You must know the proper time. It is not for you to know the time and the seasons yet. God is revealing us the time and the seasons. And if you understand by revelation, you must not prematurely say you are already God. Because the devil is doing that. There's a white horse rider. And Martin of Tours saw the image of Jesus Christ with a crown over his head. He said, you're not really Jesus Christ. Because he will be crowned upon his return. Not now. So you're getting ahead of yourself. You are an in, imposter. In, in the Antichrist will sit in the temple of God showing himself he's God. Second Thessalonians 2.4 He will sit in advance. He will be prematurely doing that. So we must not prematurely say we are God, capital letter G. I wonder, Berminan, if you're saying other end time is teaching like that. Is it a uh, capital letter G or a small letter G? They didn't specify, right? Okay. They they, they make it capital uh, G, G and capital C Christ because uh, according to them, when when uh, uh, you are you become the son of man ministry, you will become Christ. You will become God. Actually, that that term is okay. It's okay because, uh, but the 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 application of that, I think it's not, uh, fit. Uh, in nowadays, we are we are not called God. We are not. not we are in the process of empty. Uh, find ourselves. Help out! Help out! Do not leave the share screen empty. Okay. So thank you for your opinion or or your contribution. So some of their terminologies can be all right. Some, uh, most of the time, it could be extreme. We must put it in the right place in the right time. Maybe you can show the eternal age in the uh, illustration of eternity to eternity. So Feast of the Tabernacles. Now we understand. We've been teaching long time ago. The millennium is the Feast of the Tabernacle in the timeline. But before I was... I. I only can th think of the feast, but now I understand. Tabernacle is Godhead. God tabernacling in himself in man. So please, oh. So uh, later, you must uh, talk with GP David. I asked them to put a folder in the Sunday broadcast picture about the eternity to eternity. So they can easily get find it, okay? So maybe you can help out. Is still the JP David here? Okay, so uh, right, even right now we can use cell phones already. Just landscape it. So if you can just imagine the millennium the, and the eternal age, that's also the, the type of the feast 
of tabernacles, not because of the tents, but because of God uh, indwelling himself in man. Through Christ, through the church, through each believers of the church, then the rest of the world. How about the rest of the sheep group, the citizens of the world? Those who are not in their glorified bodies. Same with nature. As God's presence will fill the land, air, and sea. It's God tabernacling himself in the world. But before that happens, okay, thank you. So, could you uh, take uh, more of the black portion in the left and right? Uh, zoom it further. Okay. You see that's the millennium. This is the eternal age. The millennium, that's the Feast of the Tabernacles. The seventh day of the human creation week. That's millennium, the age of regeneration. Let's move on to the eternal age. Let's bypass the little season, the great white throne judgment. Let's move to the eternal age. Okay, zoom out, zoom out. Hello. It took taking too long to respond. Uh, please show the eternal age. Permanent. Permanent. Please show the eternal age. Okay. So uh, maybe he's having some difficulty or he couldn't hear me. Uh, the eternal age is the feast of the tabernacle in the colossal time clock of God's creation. So there are the seven days of God's creation. Seven days apply to human creation week, 7,000 years. The 7,000th year is God's the Feast of Tabernacles. The eternal age is the seventh day of God's overall uh, colossal time clock creation. Okay, here, here you go. You see that? The holy city, New Jerusalem, bride wife. The, uh, the rulership is not, not unlike in the millennium where you use a rod of iron. That's a Feast of Tabernacles because uh, the Spirit of God will be with man. Ah, uh, the tabernacle of God is with man. That's Revelation chapter 21. The tabernacle of God is with man means the people, the from Jesus Christ to the church, to the bride, wife, becomes the tabernacle of God. It's called, now called New Jerusalem. And when it comes down to earth, it spreads out all the earth. It becomes a new earth. A new heaven, new earth. That is also the feast of the tabernacles. So in, when you read the word tabernacles, think of the presence of God. While they were in the wilderness, there was a pillar of cloud, there was a pillar of fire. Then inside the altar, inside the most holy place, there is the a highest level of presence of God. And you will be destroyed if you're not worthy. But those are temporal because one day the the veil as the veil of the rent a veil of the temple was rent into the presence of God came out. One day the presence of God will engulf the whole world. The new heaven, new earth. God of wonders beyond our majesty. That's a good song. It's a good song still to play. Okay. Heaven is your tabernacle. Okay, we have a few minutes to go. Any questions? We can play several music videos if uh, we, we close early. Are there any more other questions? Did I say everything enough? Or did I miss something? I have some affliction right now. My throat. So, but we are almost 14, 14 minutes to go. So are there any, no more, any other questions? Please don't leave the share screen empty. Any other more questions? So the Feast of the Tabernacle, if you must watch our previous broadcasts, we talked about the overall uh, creation. But right now, we're focused on the presence of God that kills, cleanses, if you are worthy, you can be killed. Your microbes could be killed from you. 
separating. If you're not found worthy, you'll be, die alongside with the microbes that will be killed. Because the presence of God will definitely come, whether you like it or not. Do not think you can live forever here on this earth and be merry. God is going to draw this curtain to a close. That's the message here in Tabernacle. Okay. If there are no more other questions, could you give us closing prayer? Maybe you can play two songs, right? Love Came Down or God of Wonders, then forever. Okay. But uh, I hope you show the eternity to eternity as one of the pictures there in that song. Okay, please give us a closing prayer if there are no more questions. Okay, okay. So uh, let us uh, close our prayer. eyes and bow our heads. Lord, uh, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day, Lord, that we are here uh, studying thy word uh, to give us the uh, rapturing faith and become uh, perfect in thy front, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you've given us, the physical, spiritual, and also our source of income, Lord, that you've given us, Lord. And forgive us, Lord, for the sin that we have committed, Lord. Uh, and guide us, Lord, for today uh, to, to those people who will be going to the church, Lord. Bless them. And to the people who are listening to, the, to this broadcast, Lord, and our brethren, and uh, even uh, all all of us, Lord, that uh, uh, to for your day, Lord. Yeah. Your voice disappeared. Is the prayer over? Okay.